Hello people, in this video we want to look at this topic sigmoid volvulus. Basically we are looking at surgery topic. Look at this, where is the sigmoid colon? Here can you see the sigmoid colon? This one has twisted. So it has become sigmoid volvulus. So um, this is the topic which is very important for your exam. So this can lead to intestinal obstruction. So how will the patient present to you? Look at this. Uneven distension or, uh, of this abdomen you can see. So this is how the patient will present. Usually it's an elderly male. Okay. So that is what you should remember. So this is a surgical emergency. Okay. An elderly male, especially, uh, yeah, elderly population, especially male. And um, you have uh, not only sigmoid volvulus, you also have cecal vol volvulus. But in this video, uh, what are we looking at? Sigmoid volvulus. So above 60 years. So this will be uh, out of the so many uh, intestinal obstruct obstruction, 10 to 15 uh, percent cases will be volvulus of the sigmoid colon. It is more common in rural population and even during pregnancy this can happen. So not just old man, just think about pregnancy also because of the uterus etc. There can be sigmoid volvulus. Now let, let us look at why it happens, the precipitating factors, because of the long mesentery of the pelvic colon. So there is long mesentery, so it is able to twist, right? There is narrow attachment at the base. This is the first thing they said, long mesentery, right? Number one. Number two, they said there is a narrow attachment at the base, okay? Then number three, number three is what they are saying, long redundant pendulous sigmoid, long redundant pendulous Pendulous sigmoid. Okay, then coming to four. Four, they are saying that there is um, loaded colon due to high residue diet. So, if a uh, lot of food is there, lot of fecal matter is there, what do you call that? In the uh, colon, loaded colon is there due to high residue diet. Okay, and then coming to five. Five is diverticulus with a band or adhesion. So, this is a diverticulus with a band or an adhesion is there. Then obviously, if this adhesion, it will get pulled, right? So, what are those uh, five precipitating factors? So, there is a long mesentery, right? They are saying that uh, if this is sigmoid colon, let us say this is the sigmoid colon. Here is the rectum. Let us draw something like this. So, there is a long mesentery and then there is some fecal matter inside, residual, some lot of fecal matter which is there or there is some diverticulous adhesion or there is, um, what else did they say? Long something. What was that long? Long redundant pendulous sigmoid. Pendulous sigmoid. That's it, is it? And narrow attachment at base. Okay. Those are the five precipitating factors. And if somebody is taking medications and that medications leads to constipation, then they can have sigmoid volvulus. Right. So mentally disturbed patients, hypothyroidism if they are taking some drugs, Parkinson disease, Multiple sclerosis, hypothyroidism, they will have constipation anyways, right? They don't have to take drugs. They will be having constipation. Parkinson's, multiple sclerosis, multi mul mentally disturbed patients, these people can get a sigmoid volvulus. Here they are something, saying something called OG, O-G-I-L-V-I-E, Oglyph syndrome precipitates volvulus. Let's look at this. This one they are saying is dilatation of the colon without uh, any, obs uh, without any uh, obstruction, is it? without any mechanical obstruction. So these people, if they have dilated colon without any mechanical obstruction, they can have volvulus. Okay, volvulus, uh, like we told you, there can be sigmoid volvulus or cecal volvulus. Anyways, here we are focusing on the sigmoid volvulus. Okay. Now let us look at the clinical features. Ready people, what are we looking at? Sigmoid volvulus. Are you ready to look at the clinical features? Can you yourself tell the sigma, uh, clinical features? Yeah, we already told you a male will come, he'll have a distended abdomen, right? This is his distended abdomen and um, he may have pain, right? Okay, then what else can we see? Could be a pregnant female also, right? Pregnant woman, okay. Acute sigmoid uh, volvulus fulminant presence as intestinal obstruction. It usually starts after straining at stool. So these people would have strained at stools, etc. So then uh, this uh, volvulus would have happened. And uh, the volvulus is usually anti-clockwise in direction. And after one and a half turn, the entire loop becomes gangrenous. So you should understand this. So uh, little you turn, it will not uh, become uh, strangulated and gangrene. But little more, uh, one full turn also nothing will happen. One and a half turn if it goes, it will become uh, strangulated and it can become gangrenous. Okay. 
then abnormal uh, sorry enormous distension of the abdomen will take place and there will be tympanic note all over the abdomen this is due to diffusion of co2 okay it's diffusion of co2 and this because of this gross distension what can happen they can go into severe hypovolemic shock okay they can go into hypovolemic shock gangrene will set in what will happen there will be peritonitis etc dilated loop can be seen and felt so basically understand that um, this is an emergency they said right you should remember this this is an emergency emergency condition they are going into shock look at the pearls of wisdom here distended tympanic drum like abdomen tympanic drum like abdomen distended tympanic drum like abdomen sigmoid volvulus okay then there is one more chronic if it is as acute we saw all this uh, hypovolemic shock peritonitis gangrene etc chronic means what will happen somehow these people are partially twisting and untwisting that's why they are not having uh, uh, see if it is obstructed then they will not be able to pass stools it's not possible but here what's happening in chronic chronic means it is recurrent basically that's what they're saying it is a recurrent sigmoid volvulus it keeps untwisting and twisting okay they will present with lower abdominal pain on the left side obviously right where is your sigmoid core on left side and then there'll be distension of the abdomen which is relieved by passing large amount of flatulus okay so if he passes flatulus he'll be fine twist it untwist it okay now how do you diagnose this is where all your marks comes from because there are so many signs okay in x ray etc that's why they want you to answer this question nicely and it's an emergency obviously when you take x ray right you will see bent inner tube sign okay bent inner tube inner tube is bent kind of sign let's look at this and then you will have two air fluid levels okay one on right side and one of left side so omega sign also they are calling it as let's look at this look at this one on left side one on right side omega sign this looks like that right or they are saying it is coffee bean sign right so here you can see the coffee bean kind of a thing then when you give enema you can see the enema can't go beyond see this is rectum it can't go beyond because the there is uh, volvulus here right so it has a bird beak sign okay this is sigmoid volvulus again then what are you seeing here let's read this because the explanation for this x ray has been given here so let's go with the explanation anterior posterior supine so this guy is sleeping abdominal radiograph in a 58 year old man with a sigmoid volvulus northern exposure sign okay dilated sigmoid colon black arrow is showing dilated sigmoid colon and this uh, dilation is extending about um, uh, extending above the transverse colon which is the white arrow okay so this is what is the x ray findings x ray findings what and all will you write omega shape double uh, what is this inner tube bent inner tube sign etc so you have to just say these things bent inner tube sign omega sign uh, contrast enema you will see bird beak sign okay finally we'll move on to the treatment guys what are we going to look at now treatment get set for treatment of sigmoid volvulus you just put a tube inside okay platelet tube and sigmoid or sigmoidoscope you just push it up okay 25 to 30 cm and then large amount of platelets will come out and the obstruction will get relieved if the obstruction is relieved completely the patient can say right whether he is able to pass the platelets uh, with lot of ease and without resistance then you know that there is and and if you think that there is no gangrene and if the general condition of the patient improves then after 7 days you can do some elective resection okay but if there is still some resistance while passing the platelets tube instill barium for guidance and see if it is still having any volvulus So what are you going to do? What did they say? You just put a tube up here, and you twenty-five to thirty centimeters. You pass the tube, and then it will untwist. Okay, and then the patient will pass the flatulus based on whether he is able to pass without resistance, with resistance. You will be able to decide what to do next. Now let's go to surgical treatment, operative treatment. This is why we are here, right? This is the whole subject surgery. Uh, single sub stage resection. So you can do some single stage resection. You can, you can do Hartman procedure, sigmoid or pexy. See sigmoid or volvulus sigmoid. You are doing sigmoid or pexy. Exterior exterior ization. Exteriorization. Okay. So we we'll look at these one by one. Single stage resection. Resection means you are uh, removing something, right? If the loop is gangrenous, resection you will do, right? And then you will do end to end anastomosis. Whatever part you remove, throw it out. whatever uh, proximal end distal end is there you anastomose them okay 
and then you will give some lavage saline washes till the colon contents are clear that's it sigmoid colon is hugely dilated now let us go to okay they are saying that sigmoid colon is hugely dilated they want us to look at some images let's look at those images sigmoid colon at surgery huge distension and this one distended sigmoid colon okay so they are, if there is any gangrene then only they are removing it and then end to end anastomosis they are doing that is nothing but single stage resection now hartman procedure what's hartman procedure see in that resection they removed the gangrenous part and they'll connect the proximal and distal part but here what they are doing is they are connecting the proximal part to the skin so his poop is going to come out of the skin that's really bad right and this uh, rectum is like anus is totally useless looks like he can't even use it for passing gas or anything gas and uh, poop is going to come out of the skin so stomy some stomy is being done if the loop is gangrenous and the proximal bowel is loaded with fecal matter resection of the sigmoid colon is done okay we can understand this resection they are doing yes this we understand but what are they doing the proximal descending colon is brought out as an end colostomy and the rectum is closed so this is hartman procedure after 6 weeks colorectal anastomosis is done so they won't leave it like this for a long time after one and a half month the colorectal anastomosis is done so the colon and the rectum are anastomosed what happened to the sigmoid colon vanished they threw it into the dustbin so sigmoid colon resection is done proximal descending colon and then the rectum are anastomosed one and a half month later okay this is hartman procedure did you understand hartman procedure very good let's move on what's the next thing sigmoidopexy what is sigmoidopexy where were we people sigmoidopexy okay so if the loop is not gangrenous untwist the sigmoid loop and fix the sigmoid to the posterior abdominal wall fixing the sigmoid to the posterior abdominal wall is sigmoidopexy what is sigmoidopexy sigmoid pex c p will remember for posterior wall if this loop is sigmoid colon is fine just uh, it was not gangrenous just untwisted and stick it to the posterior abdominal wall so and tell it better be there don't get twisted again okay and if the mesentery is long you just make it short okay because this mesentery long only is giving it lot of freedom to twist but anyways now that it is fixed to posterior abdominal wall it better not twist again okay exteriorization what is this paul mikulix procedure what is this paul mikulix procedure exteriorization look at the photo this is paul mikulix procedure paul and mikulix procedure with the sigmoid volvulus what are they doing i can see two cuts in the abdominal wall and both sides it came out but how did it come out unless they cut it it can't come out right because it's a loop so if the patient's condition is poor severely dehydrated impending septicemia is there what they will do the gangrenous loop is brought outside and resected okay the gangrenous loop is brought outside and they resect it with a proximal colostomy and a distal mucus fistula so proximal colostomy i can understand that we did many times distal mucus fistula basically remember here they are removing the sub gangrenous loop they are bringing it outside they are resecting <clears throat> proximal colostomy they doing and distal mucus fistula okay paul mikulix procedure mikulix paul mikulix procedure exteriorization this complete sigmoid volvulus we'll meet you in the next video bye bye